far, far away in the land of Galoots, where the Biggle Bag trees bear their Biggle Bag fruits. And far lily bushes all blossom in yellow. And thin buttle plants squirt snowberry jello. Here, where the mountains of Rocky Magoo rise high o'er the valleys of Gildamanju, where sunsets are painted with purple and blue, you'll find a small town, not much bigger than you. Now, right in the heart of this curious town stood a curious building, the tallest around, with a clock at its top and a chute at its bottom. Twas pink in the spring, but turned red in the autumn. Now, weirder by far than its color or height was what happened there every fourth Tuesday night. Strange as it seems, it has been demonstrated that snoodles aren't born, but rather created. Every fourth Tuesday at a quarter past nine, the tower would shimmy and rattle and whine. And as the town nibbles on their bagel bag fruits, a shiny young snoodle would drop from the shoes. <gasps> That's where they came from, though no one knew why, nor who could have built the great tower so high. Can he stretch? Can he catch? Does he stand on his toes? Unfortunately, his gift was none of those. Uh -huh. You see, these mysteries of life befuddled most noodles, who'd much rather focus on drawings and doodles. Yes, most found the tower too noisy and strange, until one small snoodle made all of that change. This little snoodle, he was much like the others. He came without parents or sisters or brothers. He came without money a mom or a dad. This pack on his back, that is all that he had. This is peculiar, the little guy said. I came from a shoot and fell on my head. What do I look like? What am I for? He pondered these questions and then thought of more. Checking my bag is a good place to start. He pulled out some paints. Maybe I'm good at art. The next thing he found was a snoodle kazoo. Hey, what do you know? I can make music too. And then back on his pack, he pulled a small string. And out from the sides popped two little wings. Amazing! He said with a gleam in his eye. I can paint, play kazoo, and now I can fly. Wait till the others see all the great things I can do with my paints, my kazoo, and my wings. And so he packed up his paints and his snoodle kazoo, and then hopped off to show them all what he could do. Here, from atop this short stubby wall, the big snoodles heard the new small snoodle call. Come watch me, you guys, as I head for the sky. He straightened his wings with a gleam in his eye, and he'll jump, and he'll flap like the red snoodle finches winging their way to the peak of Mount Ginches. His flight! Unlike theirs, covered only 12 inches. You call that flying? You think you're a bird? We've never, never seen, seen anything, anything quite so absurd. The snoodles, they yeah. snorted. <laughs> the <singer> they shook. <laughs> I'll paint you a picture to show how you look. Her brush strokes, they were skillful. Her colors were coolish. The story they told made the young one feel foolish. Take it from us, said a snoodle named Sue. Flying just isn't what you're meant to do. Take this with you, the old snoodle said, so visions of flying don't go to your head. The weight on his back was as heavy as lead. So under the weight of the picture he bore, he hobbled along feeling lonely and sore. Till far up ahead, on a bench near the tower, he spied a bright bundle of fire flowers. His heart started lifting. What beautiful things! And then he remembered... I've got more than wings. So quickly he dug the paints out of his pack, and hoped that with art, maybe he'd have the knack. I did it, you guys! He yelled to the snoodles in town. You did it all right! Said the snoodles, replying. You proved you're no better at painting than flying! <laughs> <laughs> and then one of them laughed, and she did something bad. Next, she painted another picture that made him feel sad. You're puny. You're silly. You're not all that smart. You, you can't, can't use your wings and you're no good, good at art. art. That picture too was placed in his pack and made his heart slump <laughs> just as low as his back. I'm ugly. 
How foolish! And so very small. I don't think I should be with people at all. And so, he decided to get out of town. His wings hung so low that they dragged on the ground. He walked past the tower and out of the city. He walked through the fields and thought, My, this is pretty. Look at the view. The sunset is painted with purple and blue. I might like it here, said the small snoodle doo. And then feeling some warmth coming back in his chest, he thought he would sit for a moment and rest. But try as he might to sit down with grace, the weight on his back knocked him flat on his face. Ha! That's a hoop, said a voice from behind. A farmer stood up with a thin bottle vine. Why, you need a picture, my snoodle bird bud, lest you forget how you look in the mud. And so, in an instant, the picture was done and then placed in his pack, which now weighed a ton. The snoodle, he struggled, he wobbled, he shook, he stood to his feet and said with a groan, Is there anywhere I can be truly alone? Just then, overhead, flew two red snoodered finches, winging their way to the peak of Mount Ginches. I see, said the snoodle. Then that's what I'll do. Their home for those finches will be my home too. So painfully struggling under his pack, the small snoodle inched up the big mountain's back. He crawled over boulders in rain and in lightning. He trudged on and on, though the journey was frightening. <laughs> Till finally, Sunday, at a quarter past two, he spied all the meadows of Gilderman Jew and realized he was on top of Mount Ginches, alone with the wind and his thoughts and the finches. He thought of the snoodles. He thought of the tower. He thought of the bell that would chime on the hour. Bing. He thought of his pack and his very long walk. He thought it so strongly, he heard his thoughts talk. Hello, said his thoughts. You've made quite a climb. That voice, he remarked, doesn't sound much like mine. Then he turned and he noticed he wasn't alone. A man stood behind near a cave in the stone. He looked like a snoodle, though quite a bit bigger. Maybe a giant, the small snoodle figured. I'm going, the snoodle boy said with a huff. And don't paint a picture. I've got quite enough. First, come sit. Have some tea. I'm so very pleased that you're visiting me. The little boy stopped, though he'd only gone inches, and stared at this stranger he'd found on Mount Ginches. He didn't seem angry. In fact, he looked kind. The poor boy was confused. Are you blind? I'm puny. I'm silly. I'm not all that smart. I can't use my wings and I'm no good at art. Then the stranger, leaned down with a pain in his heart. Who told you these things? He asked. How do you know? These pictures I have in my pack tell me so. The small snoodle sniffled and started to go. First, if you please, let me look at this art that makes your pack heavy and weighs down your heart. So picture by picture, he unpacked the bag that bent the poor snoodle and made his wings sag. Dear boy, these look nothing like you. Then into the bin, the pictures he threw and rose from his chair saying, wait there, you'll see that what you need most is a picture from me. The small snoodle sat patiently sipping his tea. Then from a room in the back, he returned and said, Little Snoodle, it's time that you learned what you really look like. And so he threw off the sheet, but the little boy saw warmed him right to his feet. The boy in the portrait looked older and strong, with wings on his back that were sturdy and long, and a look in his eyes, both courageous and free. Sir, said the boy, are you saying that's me? I'd like to believe it, but sir, I'm afraid to. I know who you are, he replied, for I made you. I built the tower and set it in motion. I planted the meadow, put fish in the ocean, and I feed the finches. 
though most noodles doubt it. Not one of them falls that I don't know about. I've seen you fall down in the mud and the goo. I've seen all you've done, and all you will do. I gave you your pack, and your paints and your wings. I chose them for you. They're your special things. The Snoodle Kazoo is so you can sing about colors in autumn or flowers in spring. I gave you your brushes in hopes that you'd see how using them you can make pictures for me. Most of the Snoodles, said the old one sadly, just use their paints to make others feel badly. The small Snoodle pondered the things he'd been told, then wondering something, grew suddenly bold. But sir, if you made this incredible land, can't you make Snoodles obey your command? The old one smiled warmly and said to the small, A gift that's demanded is no gift at all. With that, the small Snoodle reached into his pack and pulled out the picture he'd made ten miles back. They're, they're far, Lily, sir. From over the bridge. The old one beamed brightly and said, That's for my fridge. <laughs> small Snoodle's picture was hung, the old one bent down to the face of the young and said, Here's what you look like. Here's how I see you. Keep this in your pack and you'll find it will free you from all of the pictures and all of the lies that others make up just to cut down your size. And lastly, your wings. You know what they're for, but not just to fly, son. I want you to soar. But sir, how can I fly? This picture's so big, I won't get very high. But this picture's special. It's bigger. It's brighter. Carry it close, and I think you'll feel lighter. As he heard it, the Snoodle looked down and noticed his feet were an inch off the ground. He laughed, and he leaped, <laughs> and he flew from the cave. All at once, older and stronger and brave. He flew through the clouds, and he flew at the finches. He flew up and down round the peak of Mount Ginches. He flew over far lily bushes in yellow and bimbo plant squirting snooberry jello. He flew over bigleback trees and their fruit in big lazy loops o'er the land of the loots. Then he returned home to the center of town where the snoodles all stood with their feet on the ground. And starting precisely at quarter past two, he told them the story that we just told you. Wanna cut me down? I'm gonna send a bug, gonna drown a mouth. This is brave, this is bruised, this is who I'm meant to be. This is me. I'm gonna see you right now.